Nearly a century ago, Henry Ford opined that it was a wise move that most Americans didn't understand how the banking system operates. Whereas if they did, there would be a revolution the next morning. Despite the fact that it has been several decades since it was said, the comment ascribed to Mr. Ford appears to be as relevant now as it was in the 1930s. This is not to imply that the concept of banking is a negative sign. No, banks offer us very beneficial services and have become an integral part of our lives. Hey there, welcome to Usable Wisdom. If you want success in your life and in business, then you came to the right channel because we will be uploading more videos like this. So make sure to hit that subscribe button for more life-changing content. And in today's video, I will be sharing with you seven truths about money that banks don't want you to know. Of course, every individual wants their money to be kept somewhere safe and secure. You probably don't want to hide your money under your bed. You also don't want to dig holes in your yard to hide your money. The reality is that banks are capitalizing big time, often at the expense of the gullible public. However, because banking firms conduct business in complex and comprehensive structures, some unusual practices are hidden from the prying eyes of the public. It makes no difference which side of the coin you pick. We're all in this together, either way. There are numerous ways for banks to profit from you, whether you're taking out a loan, spending it, or saving it. The sad part is that you are being milked unaware. One of the reasons why bank stocks have become an investor's delight may be due to the bank's multiple income sources. One, you're losing money every year. This isn't about the fees you pay on your purchases or someone attempting to steal your money. It's about inflation, which is the gradual increase in the prices of goods and services. It means that a $50 item today will be slightly more expensive in a year and significantly more expensive in 10 years. If you believe that the money in your savings or checking account is secure, you would expect the value to remain constant over time or even increase due to interest. Every investor wishes to keep up with inflation, but this is not always the case with most bank accounts. On average, inflation in the United States sits at 2% whereas money in the bank yields 0.05%, implying a loss of up to 1.5%. Every year you save 95% on the value of your money. Two, banks learn from your card transactions. To begin, banks earn money by charging processing fees every time you use your card or debit card to make a purchase. Assume you paid $500 for a $500 item with your credit card. If the merchant is charged 3% for each payment card transaction, that means the bank receives a whopping $15 simply for providing the machines and the convenience of payment. You're the one who has to pay this fee, and I'll demonstrate how. Assume the item was supposed to sell for $480. The price must have been raised to $500 by the business owner. The extra $20 will cover the 3% deduction for card transactions that will be made by the bank taking into account that the majority of people prefer to pay with their credit cards. Second, the average interest rate on a credit card is 17%, but your bank has the option to raise it to 18% or 19% after serving a 15 to 30 day notice. You don't always get to read these lengthy legal jargon filled letters. Because you ignore them, the banks can continue to do so while profiting from your ignorance. I'm not saying the concept of a credit card is inherently bad, Acknowledge that a credit card is a useful service that offers convenience. It's become a part of most of our daily lives. However, caution should be exercised in order to avoid accumulating debts, as this will be a terrifying place to be. Make it a habit to pay off the loan every month. 3. Your money in the bank is not physical. You may have a lot of money in the bank, but it's just numbers and electronic records. This is due to your bank's fractional reserve banking policy, which allows your money to be lent out in the form of loans and mortgages to those in need. Your funds are in the bank, according to you. However, your money is making extra money for the bank in other places. This reality became apparent in 2008, during the Great Recession. People went to the banks in a panic, demanding to withdraw their money, but the banks didn't have enough money to pay everyone. 
The banks may have that amount of liquidity, but in the event of a crisis, when everyone rushes for their money, the physical cash will be unavailable. 4. Bankers are not your friends The truth is that these people do not adore you. They're just acting out a well-rehearsed script, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. My banker friend told me how he could become a customer's friend. He accomplishes all of the things I mentioned earlier, and he earns their trust. He makes them feel like he's on their side, not the banks, and even talks them into taking a loan they didn't plan on taking. Can you imagine taking out a $50,000 line of credit that you had no intention of using? But that's what happens when you have a friendship with a banker. All they care about is the numbers. Managers and supervisors set goals for them. If they do not meet these targets in record time, they will be fired. My friend also told me about colleagues who lost their jobs because they tried to be genuine because they cared about their clients and demonstrated genuine compassion. They were unable to meet targets, and when management discovered this, they were shown the exit door. 5. Foreign Transaction Fees Your banking firm will not inform you of this, but when you travel outside the United States and use your credit or debit card to make purchases, you will incur additional fees. A friend traveled for 15 days outside of the United States some time ago. When he returned and opened his bank statement, he was taken aback. He discovered foreign transaction fee charges totaling $105.05. Often, these banks will not reveal all of this to you because if you did, you would have been able to dump them and pursue other financial options. Some credit card programs provide coverage in countries other than the United States. In this instance, there will be no additional charges on your purchases if you use their services in the countries where they have coverage. But my friend was unaware of this and was not a part of any such program. As a result, he was milked. 6. Always check your accounts. An important aspect of your life is your bank account. Hence, don't be too busy or too lazy to check it on a regular basis. There could be some unreported charges on your record that you are unaware of. If you notice a charge that is not yours, notify your bank immediately. If you file a report within the 90 days specified by law, your bank has 48 hours to return the funds to your account. Your bank does not want you to know this. They may try to delay or avoid the process, but you stick to your guns because you are legally protected. They are required to credit your money back to you. 7. You're being watched. Banks monitor all of your financial transactions. Any questionable financial activity must be reported to the IRS by banks under federal law. This policy was implemented to prevent shady transactions like money laundering. A deposit or withdrawal of more than $10,000 must be reported to the IRS. If your account needs to be audited, the IRS will issue inquiries requesting clarification for such transactions. First and foremost, officials want to know if you pay taxes on the funds. Second, they want to know if the transactions were carried out legally. So whatever you do with your money, keep in mind that you are being watched. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something usable today. If you enjoyed this video, kindly hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be updated whenever we upload new videos like this. See you next time.